So, so to prepare to, to narrate an audiobook, the first thing is to read it. Uh, you need to read the script so you get a sense of the, the, uh, the sort of morals and the themes behind the story. And, uh, and you can enjoy it. You can enjoy just reading it as you would any other story, uh, like you're an audience member. And then the second time you go back and read it, uh, you can be more technical. I start playing around with the voices that um, not only that I've done before, but also the new voices. Um, and it's fun to make those decisions, what, what the new voices are going to sound like. And because you've already read it, the script the first time, you know the sort of uh, the different voices that you're going to encounter through the recording. So you can make decisions early on about uh, you know, particular accents or uh, tones and pitches that these characters are going to have. Um, and, uh, and, and you're going to, you know, for, for scripts like these and a lot of Doctor Who, uh, you have to sort of, um, you have to look up how to pronounce some words and you'll find quite often that uh, some of them aren't actually words, they're, they're just made up for the story. Um, but also with like Doctor Who, when you're doing the, the voice of David Tennant, you need to go away and and uh, go through torturous hours of rewatching uh, your favourite childhood show and uh, sharpen up your impression of him. Oh, don't put yourself down, Pashal. I can tell you're brilliant. Definitely, definitely need to keep going back to the source material of the Tenth Doctor. I find that uh, with impressions in general and impressionists in general, you can get comfortable in your own version of a character's voice. And uh, what may start out as a very good impression might over time your, your own interpretation of the character might get further and further away from the truth if you're not going back to the the well, if you suppose, of, uh, of, uh, of where the, the voice really comes from. Um, I found that in certain impressions I've done in the past where, well, my Matt Smith impression, for example, um, you sort of, if you get told it's good and then you just buy into that, then suddenly you're hearing yourself being Matt Smith more than Matt Smith being Matt Smith. And then that just gets more and more distorted over time. So I have to go back and um, <laughs> rewatch re Doctor Who uh, to try and make sure that I'm staying in the line. I, I take inspiration from a lot of, uh, of great voice actors. I'm very fortunate to be friends with Richard Armitage and John Coleshaw. Uh, who have both, you know, <laughs> as, a, as a young actor wanting to, to learn more, obviously, they're great sources of information. And, um, and it's really interesting hearing about their sort of processes and, and the way they approach things. And I think it's, um, I think it's important to stay curious. If uh, I get asked this question a lot, it's like, what, would you, what advice would you give to other young people trying to, to get into this business? I say that you should be curious about how different people approach their work and it's uh it's exciting to know that everyone works differently and that you can take inspiration from various different sources and find out the best way of how things would work for you um but i'd say those two in particular richard and john are, are good inspirations of mine yeah working in the world of doctor who you're always going to come across some uh uh, very interesting characters with very interesting voices. I've I've gone through different characters, all oh, like this, like oh, all of these different <laughs> uh, things that look ridiculous if uh, if you weren't hearing anything and just seeing the recording of it. In this story, I enjoyed playing Brian the Ood, who uh, <laughs> I've never voiced an Ood before, um, but Ood are fascinating in the sense that they have such calming and soothing voice. Uh, voices and um, <laughs> and uh, Brian's a trained assassin, so that juxtaposition is is quite interesting to perform. And you get to say, you know, uh, things like "I think I ought to kill you" in the most uh, disarming voice imaginable. So that's a lot of fun. I'm no ordinary alien. I'm quite the opposite. Make the request. Advice on on doing a tenth Doctor impression. Um, well, um, I don't know. Well, I th I'd say that, that um, you know, David's Doctor has a really uh, unique physicality to him. And there's lots of different, you know, head movements and sort of the way he uses his jaw as well and his teeth sometimes. 
and uh, and all of those different things affect how the voice comes out. So so I'd play around with that and. Um, and I remember John Colshaw actually saying to me about how, uh, and this is, I would share this information, that um, impressions are 80% 80, 80 in the listening. And, um, and not just hearing, but really listening and, and thinking what, you know, the, the Tenth Doctor is, is quite an egotistical arrogant character at times. And these are things that you've got to consider. What's, what's the character thinking? And, um, you know, like if the 10th Doctor is in a high stakes situation, does he feel in control of the situation or is all hell breaking loose? You know, has he got a plan up his sleeve? These are all things to consider when doing the voice. They inform the voice really more than anything. Um, but also, if you listen through the show and, and, and listen back to his voice, paying particular attentions to those mannerisms of his, um, you might find certain words, certain hooks, which are unique to everyone doing the same impression um, that, that really sort of help you reel in the rest of the character. For me, it's, well, but for other people, it could be, I don't even know, I'm not going to give another example now. But, um, yeah, good luck with, with it. Don't forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.